Welcome back to edition number 36 of Talent Talk. Thank you for listening today. In today's edition, we're going to be talking with rising senior on the women's soccer team, Karina Bermudez. She's going to talk about her background, her family growing up in Colombia, and her transition into life at UNF and her, her family's transition and how it has taught her certain values that she's carried into her volunteer work with the UNF Food Fighters, an organization that's dedicated to feeding homeless throughout Jacksonville with leftover food acquired at UNF and local hospitals and just what that's taught her and her encouragement to people that want to get involved in the community. So thank you for taking the time today, Karina. Uh, thank you for making time for this interview. Thank you for having me. So give a little bit of an introduction about yourself, kind of go into what we talked a little bit about off air, just um, kind of what your parents instilled in you and then uh, how they got to the United States. So I'm Karina Bermudez. Um, I'm, I was born and raised in Miami, but both my parents were born or born in Colombia. So they didn't have, have a lot at all. My grandparents, that's actually why they came to the United States because they wanted a better life. And through hard work, grit, determination, they were able to get an education and but it, it was hard. My dad, he would tell me how uh, he sometimes he didn't know if he was gonna have food on his on the table. So and he had every type of soup imaginable because they would just throw everything in a pot. And when it ran low, they would add a little bit more water, fill it back up. So because of that, they taught me also. They taught me hard work as well. But I learned to always clean my plate, never leave, give, leave food to waste. So, because they didn't know if they were gonna have that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What, at what age did your parents uh, end up coming to the United States? My dad came when he was 10 and my mom, she came a little bit younger. She came when she was like five. And so when they arrived to the United States, were they always in South Florida, always in Miami? Always in Miami. Okay. How is that? Um, have you gone over back to Columbia much? Do they go to Columbia? Um, do you guys have family that you communicate with over there? Yeah, we have a lot, a lot of family. Some came over here and joined us over here, but we still have family in Columbia there. So we've gone back a couple of times. I love it. Um, but it, it's crazy to see, we went to, my dad's from Barranquilla and him and his brothers had to, they built their own house. Oh, wow. With, with their dad. So when we went and we saw it, it's this tiny, tiny little thing. Yeah. So my, my grandpa would go fly to the United States. He got a job here in Miami and he would just send money over to to my dad's family and they use that money to help build the house so him and his brothers built the house together my grandpa would go back over help them build it they built a tiny little house that him his three brothers and his parents and then their grandparents all lived in no ac just concrete it's Especially in Colombia, that's got to be hot. And I, I was, I was curious where in Colombia you, uh, your family was from, because I know uh, Bogota is a huge city in Colombia. But I, um, I, I mean, I've, I've seen pictures and never been there. But I'd imagine that would be an interesting experience to live in, um, that that country. Uh, how often do you go back? I wish I could go back every year, but um, I haven't gone back since it's been three years now. I'm hoping to go maybe next year. Okay. It's hard so, with school. Yes, of course. And then being a student athlete for sure. So you grow up in Miami um, and then soccer becomes a big part of your life and gives you the opportunity. Uh, when did um, you realize that you might be able to play Division One soccer? I've always wanted to. That was my first goal, first dream since I started playing. I, I actually started when I was two and a half. And it was always like, I've always loved it. It was always fun. But I think in, I think I was probably 13. 
or, or so, 12 or 13, when I really took it seriously, I thought, okay, I could do something with this. I could help my family out and help pay for college through this. Um, and yeah, it, it's been amazing. So it was a little bit of a selfless drive too. You wanted to be able to, you know, get a scholarship and provide for yourself as well. Um, so when did UNF start to reach out and was it hard for you to uh, make the move to Jacksonville? So it was my junior year of high school. Um, I remember we had a, a tournament, in, a ECNL tournament in PDA, so in, in New Jersey. And I remember it specifically because I needed, I made a GoFundMe because I couldn't afford the trip. And I was like, I was like, no, there's college coaches going. Um, I reached out to so many and uh, they, would be, they said that they would come watch my game. So I got the money to go and play there. I scored in every game. Made it count. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when, um, at the time it was, uh, Robin Comfort was the head coach. Mm -hmm. um, and Josh was the assistant coach. And they, they saw me. They invited invited me to the school to id camp i did well and i my sum or the summer of after that is when i committed was a was it a goal for you to play in the state of florida did you want to stay in the Flor in florida yeah because i have florida prepaid so. yeah <laughs> that's understandable so you get to florida uh you get to or unf sorry and um and now you get in, integrated into this other part of your life that I was just made aware of. You're starting to volunteer. Um, talk a little bit about what you've done volunteering at UNF and why that's so important to you. So I started volunteering with UNF Food Fighters. And what we do is we recover food that would be going to waste from different. So one of the locations is the cafe on campus. And then we also recover from local hospitals. We bring it back to the school, um, repackage it into healthy meals and hand deliver it to people in need. I think that is absolutely amazing because I know that the food isn't going to waste and it's going to people that need it that might not have a meal. So we're giving, we give them a uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So uh -huh. I'm, I know that they're provided for, and it, it gives me great assurance knowing that, and knowing that I'm helping people. So how do you get in touch with the people that you're delivering the food to? Because it's one thing, obviously, to gather it, but just to know who needs it, how does that happen? So our, the founder of UNF Food Fight is, is Lori Wright, and she is the one that coordinates all that. She we work with um, one of the people that we work with is meals on wheels. And um, it's a, a lot of senior citizens that are on a wait list for food. And the wait list can be filled with 900 to 1000 people at a time. Wow. So obviously, a lot of them aren't getting it. So we partnered with them. And we're taking people off the list. And now they're part of our list and we go give it to them. And then we also partner with um, the Northeast Florida AIDS Network and um, Lutheran Social Services, which is like, it's called Mission House. It's, um, yeah, I think for homeless. So what, how many hours would you say on a weekly basis during the year are you putting in for these volunteer efforts? Uh, so we meet, I'm only able, we used to meet twice a week. I was only able to go to one of them because of training times would conflict because we have to do it at a certain time to deliver the meals to them. So like, so that the meals that we recover aren't bad going bad. And then so that we give it to them on time enough for their meal. So it's usually we would meet at either nine or 10. It fluctuated throughout the semester. And um, we would finish around two. So I did that once a week. Okay. 
Um, do you have any kind of memorable stories or particular moments that you're like, wow, this is awesome that I'm being a part of this and that this exists? Yeah. So I did the, the delivery part of it where we went on the whole route and I, I was shocked first of all, on seeing how different, like you, you go to UNF and you, you basically, you just stay there and then leaving UNF and actually going out into the community, seeing how some people are living because we would go to their houses and it's our apartments and it'd be a mess. Like obviously they can't control it, but um, it was sad to see that, but they are the kindest people I've ever met. They were so grateful they they would open the door for us or wait outside because they knew we were coming and so, one guy has a he'd always have popsicles ready for us <laughs> and if it got to it was too cold in the year he would have some chocolates yeah all right <laughs> and they would always well come in come in and they want to talk because it's sad some of them that's the only interaction they're getting all day mm-hmm. so one lady was telling us all about her how her doctor's appointment and how her daughter took her there and the entire she goes when she saw us she goes my angels are here so so what have you learned about jacksonville as a community then i i didn't know there was so many like impoverished people people that were in need i didn't realize that again just because I'm you know in school the whole time so I'm glad I I did this because now I know and now I want to help even more people I want to go out more into the community have you impacted other student athletes at UNF to help or other other just students to engage in this yeah so I told my whole team about it and and they didn't know about it either so they they told me let me know when you're going I want to go um, one of my teammates, Leah Ferlin, mm-hmm. she went on a route with me. She recovered with me. And then um, I also volunteered with the OCT program. Mm-hmm. And she started volunteering with, with them this past semester as well. So how is it, how has it shifted your perspective of being a student athlete by volunteering? Now I feel like I'm, I'm more... Like, I'm not just soccer. I'm not just school. I, I'm i impacting those, like my teammates. I'm impacting those in the community. I'm doing good all around, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it makes me feel like a better person. Mm-hmm. In that sense. Did, it, did you feel like uh, the volunteering in, helped you integrate yourself into just UNF as a, as a campus as well and connect you? Oh, absolutely. I'm it's cool being behind the scenes in the cafe seeing mm-hmm. how things work um but being able to do I feel I'm learning more about the school I'm going to different areas like the I didn't even know we had a food lab mm. I think that's so cool mm-hmm. <laughs> so what do you study does this uh tie into what you study at all uh do you want to turn this into uh maybe a career or something like that I'm actually majoring in exercise science. I'm okay. the only one in the food fighters that's not a nutrition major. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, that probably gives you a little bit different perspective, though, on it and everything. Yeah. Because so- I know it's, yeah. But um, so I'm majoring in exercise science, minoring in business. So it really doesn't have anything to do with it except knowing that food makes you healthy and Mm -hmm. um yeah it could make you perform better Mm -hmm. but um i don't know i think i'd love to do something like this continue this once i graduate somehow some way Mm -hmm. how is uh just adding this other element to your life made you um manage your time differently as a student athlete so it's always been being a student athlete. It's always hard to balance school and soccer or in your sport. But now I've had to balance school, soccer, and volunteering. So now I've 
I've learned to prioritize um, every day, just like day by day, making a list of what I need to do. Um, so I'm always busy. I'm always on the move. Mm-hmm. But that I like it. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd rather be busy than bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and some people thrive under that too. I mean, if they're not busy enough, they're maybe not staying as diligent with their with their studies and everything. Um, so going forward, you've got another year here uh, at UNF. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish with this program? Um, and what would you say for people that want to get involved, whether it's with OCT or the Food Fighters? So in my last year, we've already – we actually recently we um doubled or tripled the amount of people that we're serving especially because of the virus right now um because more people are in need but i want to even increase that number a little bit more Mm -hmm. just because helping more people out and um yeah we are now delivering three times a week so i'm hoping to maybe go twice a week at least Mm -hmm. and I definitely I I reached out to my team I want to keep reaching out to people like even people in my classes I'll just say hey you want to volunteer with me because the more the better and then just like it impacted me I think it could impact them in the same way Mm -hmm. have you been in touch with anybody from the food fighters um since the uh, coronavirus shut down yeah it um she was our volunteer coordinator uh do you know how things any things will change for you guys and how you'll operate yet um going back when this does um subside i think so right now they had to make a lot of changes uh Mm -hmm. they're actually still the people that are there it's mainly if you live there and the professors are the ones working right now because the people the citizen like senior citizens and nfam and mission house they still need food Mm -hmm. so we've actually increased because we can't get the from the cafe we're getting from more local hospitals and more we've increased the number of people that we're going out to like i said but now they've gotten they've had to be very very careful handling the food Mm -hmm. so always masks gloves um keeping their distance and it's you know it's hard but it's what we have to do and i think when we go back we'll probably still implement some of those like we've always worn hats we've always hit when we put the food in the containers we're always wearing gloves but i think they're probably going to make us wear gloves the entire time mm-hmm. and making sure we're always you know, washing our hands and just being very strict on it. But it's, it's good. You know, it's what we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that that will obviously change and uh, you guys will adjust accordingly. Uh, What would you say for somebody that wants to get involved? um, And how to get involved? I would say reach out to Lori Wright, or just if you go on to their website, if you go find you in at food parties, I found them through Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, So just message them because we're always looking for people. So just put yourself out there. Um, It's super easy. It's an amazing opportunity. You'll feel so good about it. Uh, Your your heart will be full. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So so, uh, just before we end, just going a little bit to how you've adjusted during this time uh, yourself. Uh, being an athlete and you know not being in normal classes how has this experience been for you i i'm not gonna lie it was rough when it because we were having a great spring semester oh my god our everyone was super fit everyone had the we we were in the same mindset we were ready to attack the fall we attacked every day and then all of a sudden it was like stopped so but um coming back here to Miami, I've learned different ways I could exercise at home. I started using random stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've also, I've always like, I've trained alone, but now 
I've had to change it, you know, how do I explain it? Um, just like. Get more creative. Yeah, even. I've, I've yeah. got very creative, but learning different ways to make it more game realistic. And then I've, I found some, a safe place to train at as well, like personal trainers and they've pushed me, they've helped me so much. Um, so I, I think I finally found, you know, a, not a schedule, just like a, a, normal, a routine. Mm -hmm. a routine. There we go. Mm -hmm. I finally yeah. found a routine. Um, going for people that don't know, you got women's soccer had a really good year last year. Uh, a really amazing year for just their program's history. Uh, how do you, how did that team feel to you? It amazed. Like I've never seen in the three years that I've been here, that is the best team that we've had. Not nothing against like the other, the past two teams, but this team, we just connected so well and we all had the same mentality of, okay, we're going to work hard and we're going to, get what's ours <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah and you guys had a lot of gritty wins and a lot of one nothing wins and shutouts and uh really kind of tightened up when you needed to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we didn't get the rings so that is our ultimate goal and we are i think we're ready for the fall mm -hmm. what was the key uh to make you guys have that year last year i think it was just I don't know. I, I want to coach Eric Faulkner was a big part of it. He kept, you know, implementing in us work. Like he always told us there's a margin of so, such a small margin of difference that can make or break every game. So if we're off on one minute and they score, then, then that's it. So he pushed us to always the entire time, for 90 minutes straight, or if it, even overtime, you have to be focused and be ready. And I think he got us ready. <laughs> yeah, sitting on the sidelines myself right there, I've definitely heard him uh, echo that a lot and trying to win that minute or win that five minute period or um, just stay on top. And, and that's probably one of the things that a casual soccer observer doesn't realize about the sport is how crucial it is that you stay in the game because that one goal is like, you know, five scores in another sport, you know? So yeah. it really, it really has a, a big impact. Uh, what's your goal in the off season preparing for the year and um, what, what any words of advice for student athletes coming back? Um, so I, I have been, focusing on just I guess like sorry let me start it I've I've been working hard fitness wise uh always technical always got to keep my technical sharp um I'm trying to be more explosive um reading the game more I'm learning from the game so if I'm not training I'm watching soccer and trying to learn from it and so i would just say to everyone that's off right now i know it's it's crazy times but make it work you know make every day count well thank you for taking time today uh and, and thank you for your service and um definitely keep pushing that and and good luck when when it comes time again before we take off, continue to follow everything that is going on in UNF Athletics as we continue to post content on our social media accounts, UNF Ospreys on Twitter, along with all these sports-specific accounts, North Florida Ospreys on Facebook, UNF Ospreys on Instagram, and of course, UNFOspreys.com. We're looking back on each of our seasons, spring seasons included, honoring seniors and going through other various content, including our greatest moments in history. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you guys here next week.